This is part five in a series of videos in which I'm repairing and partially restoring an IBM 5120 computer. In the first four videos I got as far as stripping the unit down. It was in very poor condition. This is the keyboard off it. Uh, you can see it's uh, very dirty. Uh, but also if we look more closely we can see that quite a few of the keys are bent over to one side. Uh, we've got a missing key. Um, as uh, previously, if anyone's got a, a key for this, a B key, or indeed any keys for this, um, then uh, I would be interested in uh, buying them. But uh, the next step, I was going to do the power supply next, but I thought the next step I'd get this keyboard um, sorted out and out of the way so I can refit it to the chassis. Um, first thing is to get all the key caps off, and then I'll remove the protective sheet. And then what we'll do is we'll turn it over, take the base off and just uh, have a look inside, make sure it's uh, not full of dirt and that all the uh, keys operate the way that they should. Uh, I've inspected the cable. It doesn't look too bad. There are a few kinks in it, but it's nothing uh, serious. The plug on the end looks fine, just needs cleaning up. And um, as I say, we'll have a, a look at this once I've got the keycaps off. I have all the keycaps removed. The next step is to get this uh, membrane off. But, uh, what I want to do first is get this off, get it cleaned. We'll have a look underneath, make sure there's no damage inside the keyboard. And then uh, I can get all these keys straightened up. We can see that uh, the reason the keys are leaning is just these uh, top key uh, plates are bent. Hopefully the keys aren't damaged. They, they sound fine, but I will test them all. Uh, but I need to straighten these so the keys sit straight. The next thing is to get this off. We'll get the keys out of the way. I will be cleaning all the keycaps of course, but um, I'll do that off camera, it's a very tedious process. Uh, next thing is to get this off. Uh, I, if you're going to do this, I recommend you don't just lift it off because all the dust and dirt will fall down into the keyboard. And obviously that's what this thing is meant to be here to avoid, so we don't want to negate the work it's done over the last sort of 40 years. So the easiest way of doing this to avoid getting all the dirt uh, falling down into the keys is to tip it upside down. Let's put a bit of towel down so we capture most of it. If you tip the whole thing upside down, then what you can do is peel the membrane off and all the dirt and debris will of course fall away from the keyboard. So in theory at least then we're not going to be uh, contaminating the keyboard with all that uh, dirt and debris. So I'll do this, it'll take a while because as I said the membrane just tends to fall to pieces. Uh, but at least all the dirt will be carried down onto the a towel and it's not going to fall down into the keys. So I'll get this done, I'll get it flipped back the right way up and um, we'll take a look at it and see uh, what we're up against in terms of repairs. Okay, so as we can see, keeping it upside down, all the dirt and debris has fallen away from the keyboard uh, and now just a, a quick brush. Uh, we'll get rid of anything that's loose and that's left sticking to the keys. Again, I'm trying to brush it away from the keys rather than down into the keyboard. So all the dirt and muck that uh, the membrane collected of the life of the machine has now been got rid of rather than uh, dropping down into the keyboard. So I've finished cleaning this off. You can see we've got some uh, cleaning to do up here, but I can now remove um, this part of the um, keyboard and take the bottom cover off. Uh, I'll just get rid of the connector so it's out of the way. I'll refit this uh, when we're ready to reinstall the keyboard, get rid of all the dirt and debris, and then we'll have a, a closer look at the keyboard uh, as ever. So we've got another um, IBM specific module there. Um, hopefully, they aren't going to cause us too many headaches. We've got some uh, tantalum. Um, capacitors as well so they're most likely short circuit or if they're not now they will be before too much longer so I'll just swap those. Um, we'll get this cleaned and then we'll have a closer look inside and uh, see how it uh, looks. I've removed the clip and unplugged the connector from the keyboard. This cable needs a good clean. You can see it's just mainly dust. The actual terminals and contacts seem fine. I've taken the six screws out of the base of the keyboard and this is just a support for the bottom of the keyboard and you can see that there is uh, signs of something in here, I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, this has been 
uh, in my house for quite a long time now but even so there seems to be signs of uh, moisture in here so I can only assume this got very wet at some point so we'll take that out it needs a good clean and then the PCB should just lift off which it does and very dirty but you can see that this is a quite a strange type of keyboard it's not actually a contact type keys it's it's kind of a capacitive keyboard and the way this works is that the these uh, pads uh, move across and they're pushed down onto the traces on the uh, PCB but these are not exposed they're not um, uh, gold plated this is just a, a solder mask across the keys so it's kind of um, like a capacitive uh, touch keyboard um, with a mechanical top end to it so they're quite nice they're quite interesting keyboards and they work quite well uh, as long as they're kept fairly clean if they get dirty then the keyboard tends to think there are multiple keys being pressed all the time uh, so what I'll do I'm not going to take this apart any further unless I really need to it doesn't look too bad but I do need to clean out in here there's a lot of um, potential in here for some uh, dirt to come loose and get into the um, the space between the keys and the board which would obviously stop this working so I'll get this cleaned up I'll get it reassembled and then we can start looking at cleaning the keycaps I'll get those fitted and um, then I can test the keyboard and see if it actually works okay I've given all the parts a very good clean I've inspected the PCB check the parts as much as I can um, but just to clarify what I was saying earlier about the way this keyboard works it's a bit like the rubber bumper uh, type keypads uh, that you see except this is um, a capacitive keyboard so if we look at the uh, actual PCB contacts so I've got the meter switched to ohms range if I try to measure across uh, what should be a single pad you can see there's absolutely no reading on it and there's nothing wrong with it, this is the way it's supposed to be the uh, solder mask goes right over the top of all these contacts they don't make direct contact with anything and so if you measure one of the pads uh, on the key you'll see it's slightly conductive it's made of a sort of ferrite material so it forms a, a bridge in effect across the uh, two contacts on the PCB uh, but not through conduction uh, directly it's, um, it's kind of a capacitive uh, bridge uh, that's made across there so they work quite well um, as long as they're kept clean if you get dirt and debris on these um, uh, PCBs they tend to misbehave of course it does mean that the electronics is a bit more complex on these so I'm hoping we don't have any issues with this keyboard uh, they are a real pain to repair um, so what I'll do now is I'll start reassembling this I haven't cleaned the keycaps yet, I'll do that separately and so all I have to do to reassemble this is make sure I get this on the right way up so it goes on this way around just lining up the uh, keys with the actual switch um, assemblies okay so that's the base of the keyboard reassembled I'll now go through and straighten all the uh, key plates so I find the easiest way to straighten these is with a small adjustable or something like this and the important thing here is when you straighten it don't just push it um, what I'm doing is I'm actually twisting it so I don't put any lateral force on the key itself uh, otherwise what will happen is you'll end up bending the uh, lever further down so as I say I'm just putting this on and then I'm supporting it here and then tilting the top as I say do, don't just get all the top and force it over you'll damage the key even more and they will straighten up fairly easily okay we do have an issue with this key we can see that the uh, rubber o-ring has popped off the inner part of the key so that needs to be put back on I'll do that off uh, camera you can push it on and then work the spring up but uh, you need to do it fairly carefully otherwise it will just pop back off again so I'll do that I'll check the rest as well as this one's come off some others may as, uh, have come off as well um, but the spring holds them in place and then the keycaps will hold them down but um, as I say, I'll check all these to make sure um, they're all aligned I'll then go back through recheck that all the 
um, switch plates are straight and then I can give it a final clean and uh, it's ready to refit the key caps once they've uh, been cleaned. I've given all the key caps a really good clean so they're now ready to refit. I'm not going to refit a membrane at this stage. I may come back and fit one uh, once the machine's up and running uh, but I may need to get into this later so I'll leave it uh, uncovered for now. It's quite an easy job to just pop the key caps off but uh, I'll get them refitted now and um, as I say we'll come back and refit a membrane later if we need to. So a standard um, keyboard layout, it's just making sure I get the keys on the right way up and also when there's more than one key with the same uh, symbol on it, it's uh, getting it in the right place. Okay, that's all the keycaps fitted. The next thing is we'll get the chassis back on the bench and get this reinstalled. Before we do that, I'll just get the connector reinstalled onto the keyboard. So that just plugs on there. And then there's a small clip that uh, holds it in place to stop the uh, connector working its way out. Okay, that's ready to go back into the chassis. I'll grab the chassis and we'll get this reinstalled. Okay, so we've got the chassis ready to accept the keyboard. The keyboard's not actually screwed in, it just sits on these two supports and there are a couple of um, pegs that sit in some uh, matching notches on the keyboard. So I'll just grab the keyboard. We just need to feed the cable through before we put the keyboard onto its supports. And then it just sits on and engages with the two pegs at the top of the supports. Okay, so that's the keyboard in place. And then it's just a matter of refitting the uh, outer cover. So that goes on, push it all the way up. And then there are just a couple of uh, Allen screws that sit on the uh, underside at each corner. So I'll get those um, installed off camera in a minute, uh, but that's the keyboard uh, reinstalled. Uh, it looks a lot better than it did. As I say, what I might do uh, if I can get the machine up and running is come back and install a new membrane, uh, but I'll leave that out of the way for now just in case we do get any issues with the keyboard.